if someone's thinking about adding broccoli sprouts to their diet, consuming more broccoli or having a broccoli sprout supplement, is is this mostly about playing the long-term health game and about reducing their risk of chronic disease? So benefits that they're going to see in decades potentially if they're in their 30s or should they expect some changes to their life experience and how they feel in their day-to-day in weeks? Great question. Um, I think if you're Doug, and if you, I mean, literally, if you, if you eat, um, if you subsist on sprouts for a month at a time, you're, you're doing different things to your metabolism. I think with me, who eats broccoli sprouts or mixed sprouts, at least five times a week, I always have two jars going um, on the counter. Um, I don't feel as good, just sort of, that's a general statement, I know, but I just don't feel as good as energetic um, when I'm not on broccoli sprouts. I felt like crap coming out here because I didn't have broccoli, I didn't have any sprouts for two, three days, actually. But back to the back to the long term, I, I mean, we started to talk about this earlier and we got derailed, but when you talk about prevention of chronic disease, be it cancer, be it emphysema, COPD, um, you know, diabetes. By the way, I've been in, been part of a, two now diabetes studies with sulforaphane in Sweden, showing a positive effect on, but, on insulin sensitivity um, or on uh, gluconeogenesis, the production of, of uh, glucose by the liver, um, and. Uh, I believe I believe insulin sensitivity, and and we saw um, we saw a, a more pronounced effect in people who were more overweight at diabetics. I mean, but, I, the, the examples, by the way, of not just broccoli sprouts, but of just all sprouts on this epidemic that I see of GLP one agonists. That sprouts, you know, you take a GLP one that agonist li lives in your stomach for a week and then you get another shot a week later. This is very fast acting. You get the GLP-1 release you know, within the hour and then it passes through so you get a good movement and the like and there's no side effects from consuming this. So I've seen incredible results in weight management by people increasing and you could talk to your, your colleague, uh, Dr. Will Bolshevitz, about the impact of fiber so imagine getting your fiber along with the phytochemicals in copious amounts. The one thing I'd say on that is I, I, because I agree with you that those are beneficial, but for, as a direct comparison, I'm not sure that the level of GLP-1 would be the same comparing like an Ozempic to Sprouts. No, that's definitely. a very super physiological dose. No, no, but, but the, the reason why I'm saying that is the large dose of the GLP-1 I'm um, actually laughs in the body and causes someone, you know, to lose their appetite because they, they're developing that brick in the stomach. So this is much more natural to be able to get high fiber, have movements, get nutrients. And it, there's, if you're filling up your stomach, you know, with natural fiber and water based foods, you're going to feel full. Um, in a different way than with the Ozempic is psychologically making you not want to eat. Yeah, I think I mean I think that's well well stated. And um, yeah, B back to back. Are to you prevention. are you on a GLP one? Huh. I mean I I, <laughs> I mean I saw this. I don't need to be on, on did, did, one, but I also I do think they have utility, and I think the research of, of is, course has validated that for certain individuals that they can have a positive in, impact on body weight, body composition, um, diabetes management, even potentially on neurodegenerative um, diseases in certain people. So I think I, all I wanted to say was that if someone was listening and they were taking a GLP-1 agonist and they were hearing that thinking, oh, I can just swap that for sprouts, no, 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 no. I would take a bit no. of a pause on that. But what I would say is if someone is on a GLP-1 agonist and they don't want to be on it for life, start eating the sprouts, start eating the sprouts and start, you know, talking to the, the doctor. But I saw that Serena Williams is, is now on a GLP-1 agonist and because she had problems losing weight, you know, after, you know, after birth. So a lot of this is very complicated. Number one thing, if someone is overweight or obese, you know, all the 
all the evidence says is they have to lose weight. And um, surgery, gastro bypass surgery, is only a few percentage more effective than um, than the GLP-1. And the GLP-1 is safer because you're not going, you know, under under the under the needle in full anesthesia. So I agree with you though that I you know almost everyone could benefit from the addition of sprouts. Yeah, and and look, I think the other thing I was just going to you know ask um, uh, Dr. Fahey about was you know um, basically preserving telomere length. Like, there's another insight that people aren't talking about. You know, is is telomeres, and then the other one that I want to talk about is the detoxification of the chemicals associated with plastic um, manufacturing, the BPA, BS. And, and yeah, the telomere one's interesting given how popularized longevity has become and, and these kind of, uh, these biological age clocks. Has anyone looked at, at sulforaphane and how it affects aging? Yeah, they have. Um, and there have been studies in roundworms, Cenorhabditis elegans, I think it was, the, the nematodes, um, showing something like a 30 to 50, maybe it was more than, it was a very huge increase in lifespan in the, these are sort of the model, the, the entry level model for longevity studies. I don't know that that's been looked at clinically, but telomere length falls into the general category of um, epigenetics. Um, and in terms of epigenetics effects of sulforaphane, sulforaphane is a very potent um, HDAC inhibitor. This is the um, histone deacetylase. And this is something that, yeah, you're, you're, you're looking for the definition, but you know, when you've got chromosomes, they got a bunch of non-chromosomal stuff, proteins covering them up, and they sort of open up and let bits of the DNA be read or transcribed. And so that's all involved with this phenomenon of acetylation and deacetylation, methylation. You're screwing around with the the covering of the chromosome, so to speak. But I don't want to. I don't want to go there because we could get very technical. We talk about I'm not skin an and anti-aging. Look at his yep. skin. How old are you, Jed? Seventy-one. Seventy-one. Look at that skin. Is I it, mean, it's as it, supple it, as it, yours. Well, I'm I'm glad I don't do anything except. I, I mean, go, it's go really out biking so. No, have you ever had bo- have you ever had Botox? No. no. <laughs> kidding. Gosh, no. and any, seventy-one. Any lip plumper? No lip plumpers. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> I'm offended, Doug. <laughs> hey, I want to go back to prevention though, because no, 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 no. Not, we're, not to... we're talking about skin and cosmetics now. Jess. Yes. Okay. <laughs> oh, wait, could you talk about UV U, UV prevention through uh, sulforaphane? Yes, you can block the U, sun from 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 its. You, you can block all the UV in the. No, I'm only kidding. Um, sulforaphane. Um, applied dermally uh, topically on the skin we showed reduces um erythema or burning sunburn in about half of the subjects that it was investigated in so this is very these are very small studies but essentially you um either on the butt or the back or the or the arm inside of the arm you know you 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 treat with sulforaphane and then you treat with um, UV light. Does ingesting it does a does the does that have a similar effect? So glad you asked. That paper was just published um, by our group, and this is work that was done years ago, and it's just taken us forever to to get it published or to get around to publishing it. We did not see an effect of ingestion of sulforaphane on U, on UV induced erythema or sunburn, but we saw an enhancement of the detoxification enzymes in the skin, but not in the blood. Everybody measures blood because it's easy to measure. You, know, you stick someone and take a blood sample. But instead, we did biopsies of the, the, the skin and uh, in the untreated or the UV-treated parts of the skin. We saw increases in detoxification enzymes, and we saw reductions in the inflammatory markers, some of the inflammatory cytokines. So this was exciting, and this was with a dietary supplement. And that's and that's where the the the, the skin cancer comes from, not just from the sun; it's from the burning of the sun, the inability to reduce the inflammation, and then causing that damage, which 
leads yeah. down that path. Well, I mean, what we did not look at is DNA breaks or, or mutations, um, but that's a, that's would have been a much more difficult and more expensive and longer. You want to fund that research but, also, um, yeah, so Mr. Hill? No, oh, that's on my fund. list. But the dermal, the topical application is is. I think something ready for uh, ready for prime time because it does reduce burning in some people. Some people we don't know why, but it doesn't matter, right? If if you get a fifty percent effect or effect in fifty percent of people, it's better than a lot of drugs. Is there anyone that you would say is contraindicated to to being exposed to a sulforaphane containing food or a food that contains glucoraphanin, I should say, or glucoraphanin supplement? Often yeah, online, yeah, yeah, you might yeah, see yeah, some yeah. people claim that people that have hypothyroidism or iodine deficiency or things of that nature, they shouldn't have you know, broccoli sprouts or broccoli. Yeah, the connection with with thyroid and and iodine is, I think, fallacious. It's it's um, yes, you can you, you know you can give someone goiter by feeding them truckloads of cabbage or broccoli, probably broccoli. It's been done with cabbage back in the 1930s. So 100 years ago, they, they f fed rabbits just insane amounts of cabbage and gave them goiters. This is not something, and we've looked at, um, in fact, there are multiple publications now showing that there is no effect on indicators of, of thyroid health. Um, by sulforaphane. Yeah. Um, I've got to go, I got to readdress prevention because we talked about prevention of various chronic diseases. What is critical in my mind, and this is where getting kids used to sprouts or, or interested in sprouts comes in, is early dietary intervention, early habit formation, because when are you most likely to develop, you know, it, 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 most people, this is all about health span. Most people are healthy after they're born and make it through the first few months and then may have decent health in their 20s and maybe 30s. And by the time they, they reach their 40s, things start hitting the skids and they get various chronic conditions. By the time they get to be my age, you know, people are taking four or five medications for various conditions, hypothyroidism, um, et cetera, et cetera, beta blockers for heart problems. Um, and so this overlaying of chronic conditions does happen later in life, but as best any of the evidence shows, it's early, it's, it's, it's dietary intervention earlier in life that matters, this protective effect against mutations and against ox oxidation damage. So it's well established by the anthropologists and the, and the, and the epidemiologists that it's very difficult to get someone our age, any of our ages, to change their dietary habits, but this is why I'm 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 fascinated to hear what Doug says about his daughter eating sprouts and what Food Nerd's doing, for example, getting kids interested in the taste early on. Can you can you talk We're, about uh, just one one other thing? One of the most popular foods, um, you know, is cooked carbohydrates, which form acrylamide. So, what impact can um sulforaphane have on acrylamide. Are you talking about things like fried potato chips? Yeah, fried, fried, fried potato chips, bread, crackers, you know, basically things um, that are cooked, uh, yeah. starches you're, that are cooked at above 140 degrees Celsius. With protein, with amino acids present. You're talking about something called advanced glycation end products, AGEs, and these are highly toxic. They are over the roof high in ultra processed foods. Um, as you say, you know, anything rich in carbs um, that's been extruded, heat treated, baked, um, uh, tends to do that. Um, they are damaging, and yes, sulforaphane can um, reduce the levels of AGEs. Likewise, so literally, like if, if you were to find a way to eat broccoli sprouts and McDonald's french fries at the same time. I would just say don't eat McDonald's French fries, but oh, of course, but it, you, I have a whole series coming out where I'm going to be going into fast food restaurants and um, basically paying people to eat broccoli sprouts. That's an interesting. It's, it's, it's sounds like thought. Sasha Cohen, Baron Cohen. That's an interesting thought experiment, though. Would you, would yeah. the potentially the optimal dose for someone be higher if they're have a, a less healthy lifestyle? 
and are exposed to more air pollution, exposed to standard Western diet, yeah. et cetera? That's a good question. Um, I'd say probably it would be more beneficial um, to have a higher, yeah, I, I, that's, a good, that's a good question. I can't really answer it, but, but I, my intuition says, yeah, yeah, more, is, more would be better for them. I recently ran my full labs through Function Health, and I have to say the results were eye-opening. Turns out my ApoB was higher than ideal, probably thanks to a little too much coconut yogurt. I also found out I was slightly low in copper, something that I would have never suspected without testing. On the flip side, my biological age came back 13.3 years younger than my actual age, a calculation based on the work of aging researcher Dr. Morgan Levine. So all in all, I've got a few tweaks to make to optimize my lipids and nutrient status, but overall my blood work says I'm doing pretty well. That's what I love about function. You get access to over 160 biomarkers covering everything from hormones and inflammation to nutrients, toxins, cardiovascular risk, and more. And all your results are housed in one beautiful platform, all tracked over time. Once you get your results, you can make informed changes before small issues become big ones. To get started, head to functionhealth.com forward slash Simon Hill. The first 1,000 people get a $100 credit toward their membership. That's functionhealth.com forward slash Simon Hill.